Hey guys, welcome back to The Bright Side. Macy here, The Bright Side Girl, and today I am talking about Atlantia by Ali Condi. I'm doing a bunch of these mermaid talks because I am rereading so many mermaid books via audiobooks. So it's the second time that I've read them. I feel like my thoughts are a little bit more concise because I have recently read them versus like a year ago or two years ago. Um, but Atlantia is one of my favorite books of all time and it is definitely one of my favorite like siren slash mermaid books. It's technically not a mermaid book as I'm sure you guys know by now but it is a siren book. Maybe not in the way you're thinking but it, it is a siren book. So I absolutely love it. This is going to be a spoiler filled video. I'll also talk about this book in my audiobook wrap up at the end of June. If you guys have not read Atlantia go ahead and leave right now and spoil you. The mystery of this book is one of the best parts so I'll leave now. Bye! Okay so let's get started. So I listened to this one on audiobook because I've been rereading my all my favorite mermaid books via audiobook lately and also because I found out that Rebecca Soler narrates this one and I was so excited. She is my favorite audiobook narrator and she did a fabulous, fabulous job. I didn't like it more than I liked it the first time. I liked it about the exact same amount as opposed to some of the other books I've been rereading. I liked more so. But I just really enjoyed it. I love Rio as a character. I love that her name is Rio. I love the whole concept of this at Atlantia. I love that she loves Atlantia. So it's not exactly like a dystopian system society but it kind of is. One of my favorite parts is when she has to get good at swimming to um, earn money to go up into the above to find Bay. I just think that is so interesting especially with like the little fish that True creates and they're like metal and they're moving and the world building in this one is so good. I think the world building in this book is so much better than um, Ali Condi's other books uh, matched. I, I enjoyed the matched trilogy which is the dystopian series but this one just the world building was so thorough I could totally picture myself being in Atlantia and riding on gondolas and watching Rio swim and hanging out with True in the marketplace and I just everything from like the way the trees were made and the gods and the gods down below and the gods up above I just I thought it was so brilliant and that was like my favorite part about it. I'm a big world building type of person and I didn't think it was done slow or anything like that. I really really enjoyed it. This time around was interesting because I knew that Mare was not a bad guy from the beginning. During my first time reading it I was not sure just like Rio whether I should trust Mare or not and then it's like more heartbreaking the second time you read it when you know that you should trust Mare and she's not trusting Mare and then she's gonna die and so that part was interesting because I knew going into it um, that Mare was fine and it was just kind of heartbreaking as well. I totally forgot about the marketplace and how basically everybody died including this one leader guy that was really sad and I the one thing that kind of bummed me out about this book and it still bumps me out I really wanted Rio to succeed going up the way that they send the like dead to the above because I thought that was such a cool concept and such a good idea and then all those people died and then the fact that she went up with Mare instead. I just didn't enjoy it as I, as much as I thought that I would have enjoyed the other way. I think it would have been better if if Mare had found out about her plan and then saved her that way, I guess. I don't know if it would have worked out or not. I also forget how quick the priest um, up above, once we find Bay, her boyfriend, I can't remember his name, priest that's kind of helping them, I forget how quickly he dies and that they like shove the body in the closet with her and tr her. And I forgot that the bats also had a connection to, like had some kind of powers. I kind of forgot that that was like how she was able to like speak to the humans and stuff. I love the ending of this book. I love that we don't just like get rid of Atlantia and it doesn't just like fall apart and get destroyed because it was a bad idea and all this stuff. Like they actually found a way to make it work and to make like both societies kind of work together again and maintain the beauty of Atlantia. And I love that Rio and Bay actually love Atlantia even though they like the above a lot too. I love that they love where they come from and like appreciate it. Can see the beauty of what it is as well because it's really hard to do that sometimes um, from where you come from when you see something new and fantastical. I've always been bummed that there weren't like real mermaids or real like sirens with tails in, <laughs> tails in this book but uh, that's okay. I think it kind of works. I don't know. Let me know if you guys think that I shouldn't count this for mermaid marathon anymore since the sirens 
they're technically still sirens since they can control people with their voices and all that stuff, but they aren't like swimming or, you know, they're not technically like ocean dwelling beings, which I think the original sirens, like in mythical terms, were actually ha ladies that can control people with their voices that were half bird and half human. So technically we've kind of expanded upon that over time anyway. But I've always counted this for Mermaid Marathon just because of how like ocean themed it is and it just kind of gives you that same kind of vibe that some of these other mermaid books do. But I love True as a love interest. He is just so precious. <laughs> um, he's just a cutie pie and he's so sweet and he likes Rio so much and I love his brother Bay and they're just so nice. They're like such nice people which is really interesting to read about because Rio talks about how she's not like how she's pretty selfish and stuff but not compared to like some of our other lead characters that we've read about. So I just really enjoy like reading about nice boys once in a while instead of like dark and gruff and bossy mean guys. I liked reading about True and I like that his name was True, that was cool as well. And I liked that she wanted to be with him, but that she still chose to save Atlantia and her sister and all that stuff um, above him. You always want to choose the ones you love, but she followed like her true path and like what she was meant to do instead of just running off with True and trying to find somewhere to live together. So that was really interesting. I would love to have a sequel to this one because I just love being in the world and I think there's more to explore in Atlantia and I also want to see the aftermath of um, what happens with the above and the below once they're kind of like all joined together. And was anyone else sad that her mom was actually dead? Because part of me thought that like her mom wasn't really dead. <laughs> um, last little tidbit there. But anyway, I hope this was a thorough and somewhat fun book talk. Let me know if you guys have read or listened to Atlantia below down in the comments. I would be happy to talk about it with you and I will see you guys next time on the bright side. Bye!